Hey, how's it going? Seth here. In this video, I want to give you an overview of Land ID. So this is just going to be a quick start guide. If you've never been into Land ID before, I want to show you one of the best property research and due diligence tools I know about as a land investor. All right, so once you get into your Land ID account, you're going to see something like this. And up here, there's something called the Discover Map. So let's click on that. And the Discover Map really just allows you to go anywhere in the U.S. and discover information about whatever property or properties you're looking at. And this can be used for either doing market research or it can be used to look at a specific property and get all the information you can find about that one prospect. So I'm just going to start uh, zooming into a random area here. Let's go to maybe, I don't know, Colorado Springs, see what we can find there. And also, by the way, if you did have a specific property in mind you were trying to look for it, you could either search for it by the address right up here in the upper left corner, or you could click on parcel here. This is probably my favorite way to do it. And you could search by the parcel ID number or the owner name or even the owner's address. And you can even search for like all of the properties in that county or state that that one property owner owns as well. It's kind of up to you, whatever you're looking for. But uh, I'm just going to zoom in randomly here on an area so we can get a look at what land ID can do and what it can help us learn about any property that we happen to land on here. Let's go in here. And one thing you'll notice right off the bat is by default, that's going to show you all these parcel lines for every property in the area, which is obviously very helpful for a land investor because a lot of times we can't really see where the parcel lines are unless somebody plots them out like this for us because we don't have the benefit of seeing like a house in a yard and a line of trees in a mowed lawn like a house investor could do. So it's really helpful to see these property lines. On top of that, it also shows us the property owner's name on top of each parcel. So we can just see who owns this thing. Is it a company or a government entity or a person? It'll show us right here. So if we go to any one of these properties and we just click on it, we can find a lot of information about it. Let's go and click on this one right here. Right over here on the left, it'll show us the parcel number, how big the parcel is, the parcel address, the owner, in this case, the owner is an LLC, the owner's address, because a lot of times the owner will live somewhere else. They're not necessarily live on the property that you're looking at. We can see the assessed value, the building type, the total number of buildings, you can see if there's a mortgage on it, the mortgage amount, the date of the mortgage, it just goes on and on and on. So this is super helpful information to have if you're looking at any property. So it helps you understand like, who is this person? How long have they owned it? Do they have any outstanding loans on it? What might this property be worth? What do they think this property is worth? What did they pay for it? Lots of obvious use cases there. And that's super helpful right off the bat. We can also go over here and click on overlays. And this is awesome. This is where Land ID really shines because what it's doing here is it's taking a lot of information from a lot of different databases and it pulls it into one place. A lot of times you could find this stuff elsewhere, but the other places of going to do it do a terrible job at creating a nice user-friendly interface that makes it easy and even fun to use. So I'll just show you a few examples here. So one of them is contour lines. And as you can see, as soon as I clicked on that, it added this little line right here. And if we zoom out a little bit, we can start to see more context for what these lines are telling us. These are essentially giving us topographic lines to understand where the hills and the valleys are. And in this area, it's pretty flat, but in a place like Colorado, there's lots of places that are not flat at all. And it's even more useful to have this kind of information right at your fingertips. So if we go over here to these mountains and we zoom in a little bit, we can see a lot better all these different topographic contour lines to show us the elevations of all these properties. And uh, there's also this other thing over here, the base map. So by default, it's going to be showing us the hex aerial, but there's other versions of this that we can see too. For example, we could click on the modern topo map and it's just going to show us those topo lines or we could click the vintage topo map. Really the main difference between these two is the modern one is more updated. And a lot of times the topographic information doesn't really change that much. But the nice thing about land ID is you don't really have to have either one of these overlays if you don't want. You can just go right back to the aerial satellite imagery and those topo lines are there anyway, just because you've got this contour lines thing checked. If we zoom in a little bit more, so we can see a lot more information about exactly what those elevations are and how much they're changing from one line to the next. And I will say this is not quite the same as getting a topographic survey. That's going to be like perfect in telling you exactly what those lines are and they will measure thousands of different elevation points on one property. So that's not exactly what this is, but still, if you're just doing a first pass at a property, trying to identify any potential issues, this stuff is very, very helpful to have. So I'm going to go ahead and turn contour lines off. So another thing that I've always found really helpful, and it's more helpful in some areas than others, but just being able to see the FEMA floodplain. 
If your property is located in or anywhere near a flood zone, that can definitely be a issue in some cases, depending on where you're at and which flood plan it's in, because it can have a lot of implications for the cost of flood insurance. If somebody chooses to build something on that property or if something is already built on that property, a lot of times if you get a loan, the lender may force you to have flood insurance on that property. And in some cases, the flood insurance is ridiculously expensive. So just knowing if a property is in a flood zone, and if so, what level of severity that flood zone is. It's just really good to know that. And this single overlay will show you that very easily wherever you're at. We can also see like federal and state land, which can be super helpful, especially if you happen to own property or if you're looking to buy a property that like backs up to state or federal land. And a lot of property owners appreciate having their property adjoining this kind of land. So if you can just identify that really easily, this helps a ton. I didn't know how to get these kind of maps or where to even find them back when I started as a land investor and having it available so easily is a huge, huge benefit just for this one thing here. Other useful overlays would be like the land use. You can just very quickly see at a glance what that zoning classification might be. And once you actually like click on the property itself, you can zoom in a little bit more and see more specifics of, you know, what the use actually is. In this case, it's amusement and recreation. But just being able to see at a glance which properties are grouped together where is seriously helpful. And you can also check out housing developments. It can be a really useful way to see which parts of that city are growing and under development right now. This can be a nice way to just see where the path of growth is and where things are growing. All these little tiny house icons indicate a housing development. If we go click on this one, for example, we can see the builder, the builder's website, the housing development name, lots of stuff. It would be really hard to just see this with the naked eye, just looking at like Google Maps or something. But Land ID makes it super easy to do that. And uh, you can even go and check out the website of this developer and learn more about them and maybe see, do they have other developments going on in this area? And where are those? Lots of really helpful clues that are kind of hard to see if you don't have a tool like this at your disposal. And uh, let's see, you can also check out points of interest or uh, railroad tracks. If those things are anywhere nearby, you can see school districts, which can be really useful, especially in the housing world. If you just want to understand, hey, you know, what school district is this property? And sometimes that can have serious implications for the value of a house and even land in a lot of cases. Something I used to find surprisingly useful back when I was in banking is seeing really clearly where the city and township and county limits are. Because a lot of times, you know, you might have a question about a certain property and the only person with that answer is whoever is in charge of that local municipality. And as you might know, there's a lot of properties out there that have a mailing address under a certain city, even though they're not located in that city. City. They might be in like the township next door. And you'd never really know that unless you had the benefit of seeing these kind of city limits right on a map and making it really easy for you. You can also see this soil maps. Soil maps are actually put together by the USDA. And I believe it was originally intended for like farming purposes, but it can actually be useful for other things too. For example, if you're trying to figure out, I wonder if my property has the type of soil that will drain well. Is it like sand or is it clay or is it something else? And with these soil maps, you can put this over overlay on there and click on it and it will actually tell you what it is, or at least what the general soil type is in that area. And I will say, you know, this is not the same thing as getting like a geotechnical investigation where they go on your property and drill into the soil and take samples. It's not that. It's a much more general look at that area. But again, when you're just doing a first pass and you need to quickly get some ideas on what this area looks like, this can be helpful. This can also have implications for like perk tests and that kind of thing, if the soil can drain water easily or not. Not the same as actually getting a real perk test on site, but just a good first pass and a really helpful thing to be able to look at. So we've also got like water features and uh, wetlands and water wells and that kind of thing. So with wetlands, for example, I know this is a huge deal in some states and not as huge of a deal in others. But once you turn this overlay on, it will show you all the areas that it thinks might be wetlands. And I'll just say in my experience with the wetlands mapper, what it's doing in most of these cases is it's using its intelligent satellite imagery to predict where it thinks wetlands might be. Just first pass due diligence. It's a great first step to look at it. And uh, there's a lot of other things that you can see here that you can check out that will make it just really easy to understand what's going on on and around your property without having to look at like 20 different maps. It's just all here in one place. 
If you get access to the internet in an internet browser or even on your phone, Land ID will make this extremely easy for you. And another pretty cool thing, you probably didn't notice this as I've been talking here, but right down here in the lower right corner, it's always going to tell you whatever the coordinates are, wherever you have your mouse cursor. And uh, there's also this 3D thing where you can click on this and it will turn it into this kind of a map where it kind of looks a lot like Google Earth would, but it's all just baked right into Land ID. If you're at all interested in like topo contour lines and that kind of thing, this allows you to visualize that a lot easier. You could even look at it this way and then also turn those contour lines back on so you can sort of see it both ways. So there you go. This is just a really quick overview of Land ID, and I'm hardly even scratching the surface of all Land ID can do. But I will say, if you're a land investor or if you're really doing anything in the world of land development or land research of any kind, Land ID is an extremely useful tool to have at your disposal that can look at a property from so many different angles. It's pretty awesome. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you was how you can create a map and add some different features to it to really help another person understand what is going on with this property, whether that's that be what this property looks like right now or what your plans are for the property. Say if you want to add something or take something away or subdivide it or change it in some way, or even just use this for helping another person locate where the property is. I'm going to explain all that in the next video. So stay tuned and uh, check that out. If you like what you see so far, if you want to check out Land ID, all I got to do is go to land.id and you can sign up there. If you decide to use it, I hope you find it really helpful.